This is Tony Tomlin again. Sherry Spencer. And we're going to share with you a minute or two of history. Episode number 18. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. We're still going. They can't stop us, Sherry. They can't I stop us. They, they tried, tried to. They tried to. But that restraining order was denied. That's right, that's right. We have friends in low places. <laughs> so we're going to jump back on the trolley. I'm sitting here in number 38 baggage car up at stop 65. And I'm kind of just waiting for the train to get to me. So well, yeah, I'm waiting for the guy at the ticket window to come back. He's still at lunch. But as soon as he returns, I'm going to get, get back on. Oh, these are fun. So where are we headed? Oh, and kick it off. Well, well, now we are headed to our next stop, which will be stop 57. Stop 57. You know where that is? I'm not going there. Inwood. It Inwood was called Beach. Inwood Beach. It was called Inwood Beach back in the day. And, you know, you could stop there for, for whatever reason. You might have your summer cottage there or near there. Or your friend might have a summer cottage. Or maybe you want to stop there and play golf. Golf? Golf. At Inwood? Well, you know, there's a story behind that. You know, just jump into play golf. You want to hear the story, right? Of course. <laughs> okay. Well, back in 1926, there was a, a group that got together and formed the Inwood Beach Company. And their plan was to sell off lots to individuals who could then develop those lots and build houses and then they'd have a nice housing development at Inwood Beach. So the Inwood Beach group fell into some financial difficulty. They had some judgments taken against them and the next thing you know a receiver is appointed to manage and take charge of all these properties. Now we have an election in Avon Lake. In 1930 Hugo Baus is elected. Oh, Hugo. Comes, yeah, I remember oh, him. Do, you do? I really. No, I didn't think so. So Hugo gets elected. Hugo gets involved in this, this litigation. And next thing you know, Hugo Baus is selling off parcels of property. So he's the people. mayor? He's the mayor. Yeah. Yeah. There's you can some... Get shenanigans going on there. Yeah. I have a feeling. Uh, any, any ethical issues that you can see going on here? Nah, not one. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, um, Bowes starts selling these properties, and he he's quite successful at selling property. I mean, this this guy just must have been a silver-tongued something or other, because he made a lot of money, owned a lovely estate on Walker Road. And he installed a golf course on his property yeah. it, to entice people to come to Inwood Beach and buy in. He told them that they would have free use of his golf course on his private estate if they would buy some of this property. Wasn't that right where the, the Brown, Mrs. Brown lived in that square where the fire department currently is? Exactly. Exactly. Jeez. You got it. Man. All right. Well, you know, you know what? I think, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, I, I think we've had our fill of Baus. What do you think? Baus the Laos. <laughs> yeah, he picked up that nickname, didn't he, later on? Well, and it, wasn't he like mayor for three terms or something? Yes, he was. So he years. had he had some, some uh, shenanigans going on for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, think about this. He also would have been running mayor's court. I know to you, I may look old. Maybe we don't want to think too hard about that. No, I know. Maybe we ought to just uh, let go of Mayor Baus for a little while. Yeah. yeah. So let's come back on the train. Yeah, I was going to say, let's get back on the train and get the heck out of Stop 57. Oh, yeah, let's get back on the track. You know, let's go on down a little bit to Stop 61. What do you think of that? Okay, sounds like a plan. Let's roll. All right. Stop 61, here it comes. The home of Dr. Pipes. Ah, famous Dr. Pipes. Well, to some extent he was. He was also one of our mayors. He was, he was our, our uh, community's doctor, but he was also mayor. He was mayor for two terms in the city of Avon. 
before he moved to Avon Lake and became mayor in Avon Lake. So he served as mayor from in Avon Lake from 1926 until 1929. And probably his claim to fame, aside from the fact that he would have been uh, running mayor's court during Prohibition era, is that he was the one responsible for bringing telephone service into Avon Lake. Really? Yes. Yes, he brought telephone service into Avon Lake. And also interesting is he was on the board for that telephone service. Again, um, yeah, I know I was kind of struggling with the ethics of all of it. But anyway, we won't go there. Mind you that Pipes was mayor during Prohibition, and I think maybe his popularity waned because of that. Because when he ran for re-election, guess who beat him? Who? Go ahead. No. Baus. 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 Yes. <laughs> There's some definitely some shenanigans. You know, it all goes back to the same thing I've been saying. There's a theme here over the several episodes. It's all about the hooch. <laughs> the overriding theme. Yes, yes. <laughs> Avon had an incredible amount of illegal stuff going on, and mostly it was related to prohibition. Mostly. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. you know what? Let's get back on the train. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 your window too. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it finally quieted quite down, okay, okay. at least for a bit. So now we're on the train, and that was stop fifty-one. Yeah, so we're gonna move on ahead now to stop sixty-four. Stop sixty-four. Do you know Is where we are? Right before sixty-five. Oh, you're good. You nailed it. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's probably, as I recall, somewhere around Moore Road. Yes. And, you know, back in the day, Moore Road had another name. Well, kind of the same, but a little bit longer. It was called Steve Moore Road, and it was hyphenated. Do you remember that? Uh, of course I do. I remember it. No, I don't. How old do you think I am? <laughs> well, I remember hearing people call it that. Well, I do too, but I don't remember it. You know, it's not in my present memory bank. Well, anyway, now it's Moore Road, and it was Steve Moore Road. And at least all the way up through the 1940 census, it was still referred to as Steve Moore Road. <laughs> You're talking to the wrong person when it comes to naming roads after families. I'm just yeah, yeah. ordering you ahead of time. I keep pushing that button. Though. I know you do. Someday, when I, before I die... <laughs> There's going to be a street in Avon Lake that says Tominick, and I may have to steal a sign and replace it, but that's going to happen. You don't have to steal and replace it. You know how some people just put their license plate right over top of the old one and bolt it right onto the car? You can do yeah. that with that sign you have. I'd be up on a stepladder in the middle of the night, and I'd get arrested. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, you would. So anyway, let me tell you who Steve Moore was. Please. All right. You know, in our cemetery there along the lake, just west of Folger House, we have a Revolutionary War soldier buried there. He's the only one in Avon or Avon Lake. Wow. Buried in Avon or Avon Lake. His name is Joseph Moore. His claim to fame is that he served for a time as General George Washington's bodyguard. He had a very, very large family. And his oldest son, I believe this was his oldest, was named Theron Moore, T-H-E-R-O-N. And Theron had four wives. He outlived them all. And a lot of children. One of his children was Steve Moore. Jeez. Four who did, wives. Who, who, I had a hard enough time with... <laughs> okay, you better edit this carefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the son Steve Moore is the son for whom Moore Road was named. I don't know more anything more specific than that. Was that where his farm was? Uh, I don't know. But at any rate, Steve Moore spent the last seven years of his life in Kansas, and that's where he died, and that's where he's buried. But that's where our Moore Road gets its name. Well, in that whole area, Sherry was, you know, the Baird Farm. Um, and they're related to Steve Moore. And uh, I think um, there's a lot of bears still in the community that can tell that story. Maybe we need to get them on one day and just say, tell us about your family. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. 
Well, speaking of fun, I hope that next time you're wearing your dancing shoes when we get back on the Lake Shore Lake Railway. Because we're going to? Beach Park. Yep, the Dance Hall Beach Park Station. And, uh, and by the way, there is going to be some excitement coming up in August, end of this coming month, uh, because the Avonic Historical Society is going to have a, uh, a Rockin' the Rails concert on the platform of number 38 at Stop 65. And I always, I say that, I don't know how to refer to that end of town without simply just saying stop 65. And people look at me like, I, like I'm speaking a foreign language, but hey, I figure if they want to know, they'll learn. So, well, yeah. it, was a, it was a short trip today. Hopefully, yeah. um, hopefully we got a lot of information out and I appreciate all the work that you do. And I wish you could make sure that next time we speak, we don't have those birds chirping in the background. You know, I'll have a talk with those birds. <laughs> so for now, this is Tony Tominick and and Jerry Spencer and Bird Chickadee. <laughs> Say, see you later. <laughs>